Today on the Infinite Loop Show. Today on the Infinite Loop Show. Stop copying me. Stop copying me. I'm Apple. I'm Samsung. And it's the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show. I am Apple. And I am Casey Samsung Coglin. <laughs> I'm Michael Apple Gaines. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my God. Welcome to episode 30 of the Infinite Loop we're Show. 30. We're getting so old. I know we are. Pretty soon we're going to be 50. <laughs> Pretty soon we're going to be collecting Social Security. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> getting uh, discounted, you know, early bird meals at. Soup plantation. Oh my god! Can you can you imagine? It's four o'clock. It's time for dinner. <laughs> yeah. I went. I would. I'll tell you real quick because we're on a little bit of a time schedule uh, because Casey's got to go in thirty three minutes. But I just want to say this real fast. When I went to Florida to visit my dad a while back, oh my god! Everybody eats at four o'clock. All the old people come out and <laughs> just offended a bunch of people. It's a lot. Of what is it with people. eating at four o'clock? I don't. My my I, grandparents didn't no. do that. I don't know. As you get older, you can only stay awake for a shorter period of time. So <laughs> I don't know. They went to bed you at eleven. Better hurry up and eat before you fall asleep. I don't uh, know. I don't get it. All right, what I do get, what I want to get, is my own iPhone five. Mm, excuse me. Yeah. And the rumors going around now is that the pre-orders are going to be up on September twelfth, the same day as the rumored event. The announcement. Yeah. And they're going to come out nine days later on the twenty-first. So. As I said in the last show, I hope that they do allow us to pre-order and not stand on a stupid line. Yeah, so mark your iCal, kids, <laughs> September 12th. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And I, the first thing I'm going to do, I told you, is if it's got NFC, I want to hook that mofo up and get a work. Yeah, go to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Starbucks and get a nice tea or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Um yeah, I can't wait for this phone and all the uh, pictures coming out now with all the m- manufacturers like rebuilding the phone from linked parts. Mm-hmm. It, it this has been, I think, the most heavily leaked iPhone. Do you think date. so? Even more than the 4S? Yeah, because well, usually you get a lot of rumors, but you and you get one or two parts. But right now they have like just about all the parts that are able to. <laughs> build the phone you mm-hmm. know so you, not only do we have kind of like rough sketches and whatnot but you have like a physical phone that you can <laughs> see before it's even been announced um did you see i'll just say real quick did you see the fake screw oh yeah okay um, i looked at this that screw was, um, first off who believes this giant fat screw was going to be a lot of people a lot of um you know rumor mills and journalists you know we're all over that <laughs> screw story <laughs> and as they said on uh, mac break uh, weekly the screw job uh i looked at it and I, I it's funny because the way that i looked at it was i looked at it for a second i went nope flip to the next story and a few hours later i come back and all these people are reporting this and i went are you kidding me this is totally fake and sure enough, it was totally fake. I mean, I could see where people would think it would be real because Apple does have a history of creating their own screws and parts. You know, like every iteration, there. You know, that one was a pentalobe screw, and then they had um, the the their own hex screw, and mm-hmm. you know, um, so they do have a history of doing that. But this one was just so bizarre. Like, what is like a 20 point star on the top <laughs> it was like a tattoo ridiculous and apparently it yeah ended up being a hoax um by a swedish design firm <laughs> so go swedes go yay um what's going on with these apple patents and the dvrs this looks very interesting so yeah um apple was just awarded a patent that they filed for some time ago mm-hmm. quite a few years ago and it's just now coming in the news because they just got awarded the patent and it deals with strictly dvr and network like television network navigation for a tv mm-hmm. 
So I don't know why they'd want this patent or what they could possibly <laughs> use it for. All well, they, they just want to do is that Samsung can copy them. <laughs> you think they're just throwing out troll bait, you know? I don't know. But, to pick up? You know. One of the reasons why uh, Casey and I don't talk about the whole Apple Samsung patent thing is because it's just so ridiculous. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But um, if, if, if yeah, circus, um, if we can get an Apple-based DVR, I think that would be amazing. I mean, I've got a TV. Just I've the been, set-top box? You don't want the whole TV? The I whole shebang? I, well, the thing is, I don't need a TV because I've got one. Well, that So does everybody. Uh, Everybody's already got a TV. But the second Apple would make one, people who aren't even looking for a new TV, who are perfectly happy with their current TV, would go out and fucking buy this TV. Maybe. Maybe. But I... Mm, mm, maybe. I would mm -hmm. just buy a set top box. I wouldn't necessarily want the television. But I would buy two of these TVs. Here's the thing. TiVo, I've been following the whole TiVo thing for many years. TiVo does have their own patents. And so mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how Apple would sort of dip into the DVR business without having to make a deal with TiVo. I'm sure they would. They, they might need to, but I guess, you know, the same could have been said about the phone industry, right? You know, it's not like they were early to that game. They were so late to the phone game and still was very successful in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. GameStop. Have you ever <laughs> been to a GameStop? Have you heard of these guys? Uh, not in a <laughs> long, long time. I thought, you know, they hadn't been around anymore. GameStop. I, I went to my local GameStop recently to put down a pre-order for um, uh, the uh, Mr. Pandaria expansion for World of Warcraft. And this is the second time that I had gone in there and sort of like looked real fast at this this poster on the front door that said oh we're going to buy we will buy your eye devices oh i didn't even know they're already so they're already advertising this well well they're they were advertising the trade-ins you know how you can bring in like dvds mm -hmm. and, and old consoles and things like that well now it looks like what they're trying to do is is sell this stuff also not not just i mean obviously they would take what I mean is there's, there are some companies that buy your stuff, but they don't actually sell it back. They sell it through other channels, but they're going to mm -hmm. buy them and sell them directly. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't really think that they would do this, but I guess with the, the, uh, the gaming industry going digital, that they have yeah, to find some sense. way of keeping themselves afloat until they figure out what they're doing. All right. So why not? Why not? You know, be rebrand yourself as like an Apple device repair and resell shop. They would have. Why to not? <laughs> why not? They would have to change their name because GameStop won't cut it anymore. If they go but into a more uh, general sense, I stop. I oh look at that! I stop. I stop and, and dump off all my old gadgets. <laughs> it's funny. No, I'm I'm not kidding. I'm actually going to check and see if that's taken. I'll bet you it is, but. You never know. Mm. It's a it's a five character domain. Who is yeah. iStop dot com? Yep, taken. <laughs> oh, it's been taken now. since December of ninety six. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. You never know. You can always get lucky. I've gotten lucky on some uh, domains. So, uh, would you buy a used device from GameStop? No, I've well, I've bought used devices from GameStop. I've bought uh, refurbished PS2s before mm -hmm. uh, from them, and so I mean, I have no problem with that. Apple devices, I've never bought used, just ever for mm -hmm. anything. So, I, don't, I mean, m a lot of people do. Like you know, you go on Craigslist, to eBay. Um, they hold their resale value. That's one of the great perks of Max is if you keep it in good condition, you can resell it and recoup most of the money. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, people are out there to buy this stuff. It's definitely like there's no... It's not like there's no market for it. Sure. Um, I personally wouldn't do it, but I know tons of people who would. So. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I'm going to... Hey. The next, so, our next uh, news yeah. item. <laughs> this was a week, uh, a week news week. W e a k. There wasn't a lot of big news this week, was there? We've been saying that for like the last three or four weeks. We have. I think this we? week had more news than the last couple weeks. Yeah. But this next piece, it's all for you. Uh, your MacBook Pro or your Mac Pro. Go ahead, say it. 
uh, boot camp files have been found uh, hinting at new uh, product numbers Mm -hmm. that are in line with the Mac Pro and iMac models. So (laughs) the reason why I I wrote a bunch of four-letter F-bombs in the show notes. (laughs) Yeah, in case you haven't been listening to the last 29 episodes, Mike is really hard up for a new Mac Pro. He's almost to the point where he's going to buy an iMac instead. But Apple just keeps dangling that carrot and out in front saying, uh, yeah, well, we're going to upgrade it. Don't worry. We're going to upgrade the Pro. Don't worry. Um, to the point where recently even um, Tim Cook and I guess some unnamed Apple spokesperson uh, even confirmed that the Mac Pro specifically would mm-hmm. receive a full redesign so that even leads me to think case design and everything oh i'm sure i'm sure for, I'll bet, for delivery sometime in 2013 i'll bet you that they'll get rid of the optical drive they'll keep the hard drive base they have to they they just have to keep the hard drive base and that's yes. one of the selling points of the pro in the first place um mm-hmm. i would think that i would have built in um it would have the uh, the good built-in graphics, unlike the mobile. Like it wouldn't have the mobile. Um, so you what? would. But you they see, here, here's what I don't understand. As as a developer, I don't understand why you have to flash these video cards to work on the Macs. I rem- I realized that you had to do it before for the Indianess, but now mm-hmm. that these things are are all the same Indianess, they're all based on Intel. Why do you have to flash the cards? That's more of a rhetorical question. But um, I don't know, but I don't understand that. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. Um, now there are uh, there's a thought going on. Uh, let me back up. Tim Cook said that um, Mac Pros were going to be coming in late 2013. Now that we've got boot camp files that mm-hmm. say I think it's MP60 Mac Pro six comma zero um, that it's hinting that these are going to come sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking maybe January they might be announced, or at least by March. Mm. Yeah, it could go either way. I would think the latest they would announce it, maybe WWDC. WWDC, which means I'm going to be stuck with this thing for Gen- a year. Yeah. The re- uh, I'm not going to get into it. But, um, yeah, I'm looking. And, and also a new uh, iMac models. Which we knew were coming. Yeah, so when whenever you know they release the the Pro, the iMac will get a refresh as well. The way that I see it is that the the, the Mac Pro 6.0 is going to be within Mountain Lion's lifetime. Um, yeah. But I think the reason why I think it's going to come sooner rather than later is that they can always update the boot camp files at any time. If this was going to come in, let's say, 10.8.5, let's say, then they mm. wouldn't update these files until later. They would be, there would be no need to. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they're in ten eight, this is what in t- uh, that ten eight zero, makes mm-hmm. me think that it's coming before maybe ten eight two. Yeah, because we need ten eight one like yesterday. So oh, it's <laughs> been ceded to developers. Um, I saw that. that yeah, so. Let's push that out, Apple. Thanks. All right. Kate moving on to <laughs> moving on to rapid fire because Casey's got to go. Um, Red and MacBook Pros are showing Finder ghosting. Oh, I don't like this. I know. Um, and really, in the back of my head, I <clears throat> just kind of thinking, you know, I mean, as much as I hate seeing problems with Macs, a lot of the time with a first iteration of like a really new Mac. You know, there's problems. Mm-hmm. Um, like when they first went to Unibody, there sure. were significant overheating issues with the first gen. Um, and I thought, well, that's definitely going to happen with these new retinas because, A, they're thinner. Mm-hmm. You know, everything's packed in there much tighter, you know, with the same amount of very little airflow. <laughs> and, um, and the retina, you know, display is probably creating, you know, as much, if not more work, um, possibly more heat, you know, all of that can't be good. Mm -hmm. But we'll see how that pans out. Um, And so I don't think this is a heat issue. We haven't seen any heat issues yet. But this ghosting issue is kind of strange. Um, Apparently you can do this big old long line of code in Terminal to determine if you have either a Samsung or an LG display. And um, it's... 
it's a problem, I think, with the LGs. I might be wrong, but the LGs uh, have this ghosting issue, and you only see it if you put up, like, a f- completely gray screen, like either a, a desktop, um, you know, just the solid gray color or, like, a PowerPoint or something, you know, that's just so it's all gray. Um, and then you can see kind of like a ghost image of the Finder window. Mm. All right. For those of you that don't know what a ghosting image is, um, this happens on my old HD TV. It's um, if you leave an image up for a certain period of time, like let's say five minutes, and then you change it, you can see a like a, a reverse color image um, in your television. So yeah, like, it's for example, much more common with TVs. Yeah, for example, I had my uh, my PS3 on for only like two or three minutes. And then we we were watching Doctor Who, and then we switched over to Doctor Who, and you could still see like the little icons mm-hmm. in there for a few minutes until they finally went away. Annoying. Well, at least it's not burning, but True. Um, oh, it's bad. maybe that'll be the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's with the uh, new iPad Mini schematics? Uh, thinner bezels. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on to the next. Uh, well, that's this pretty is much rapid the whole fire. Story. The whole story is just like, you know, we've seen so many sketches and and rumors and everything for the iPad mini. So any little nugget of news is blown up across the the whole, you know, atmosphere. And so this is just like they, what is probably going to be the iPad mini looks just like we thought, exactly like the current iPad scaled down, but also the bezels on the sides Mm -hmm. are like way way thin yeah. i'm skipping the next one because it's stupid um <laughs> fair enough a, a thief broke into steve jobs's house i know this sucks come on what kind of dumbass does this um well he didn't know it was steve jobs house though oh he didn't oh. steve jobs you know famously did not have an elaborate house he didn't live in a mansion with, you know, a wall and a moat around it. Mm-hmm. He didn't have anything that looked like bu- it belonged to, you know, a multi-million, billion-dollar CEO. Um, it just looks like a normal kind of upscale neighborhood house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and apparently, yeah, sixty grand worth of computers and stuff was stolen. Um, nobody was hurt. Like I said, the guy didn't know it was Steve Jobs' house. He is in custody and awaiting his court date. He stole Steve's wallet, which had a dollar in it. And oh, that, oh, I didn't hear that. You didn't hear, yeah, it had his annual salary, his Apple salary in it. It's it's symbolic. You just go, no, oh, really? What a scumbag. Well, then maybe he did. Because I heard like one said that after when he was... Uh, found you know and held and and questioning they they said did you know steve jobs house and he said no but if if he takes his wallet i mean there had to have been clues i mean there's probably pictures on the wall you know and everything of the family like how do you i I don't unless you don't know what steve looks like or something i don't know (laughs) i don't know um, but here's the funny part, and this always happens, is that as soon as the stuff was stolen, you turn on the devices, and bang, you've got the guy's is location. That- Good. So Good. Uh, you like your iPad? Yeah. You like your 2S, uh, your uh, Mac SE from work? I love it, and I get compliments on it every day. All the time? Well, All of the time. N- now there's a cover for your iPad that will actually give it a, the, uh, an image of a Mac Plus. It's not an SE, but it's a Plus, and it goes on the back, and, and so the back of your, your iPad looks like an old classic uh, Macintosh Plus. I saw this, and I, I I don't know. I thought it was very, very cute and, and an awesome idea, but at the same time, I was like, I have the real thing, like right here. <laughs> <laughs> And it actually boots up and everything. I, mean. I put that in there because I figured you would like it. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. That, but um, yeah, those are very cute. They're kind of they remind me of the iPhone cases where they have like an old TI calculator image on yes. the back, or you know, a tape deck image or something. <laughs> you know, I like these. They're cute. All right, we're gonna move on to apps before we go. Uh, tell us about yours this week. Okay, so very, um, I don't know, it, it's a solitaire app, but it's 
I love it, and I find myself going back and playing it all the time because it's just so freaking beautiful. It's called Awesome Solitaire, and it is just <laughs> that. All it is is solitaire, straight up. You don't even get, like, spider solitaire, you know, or some advanced. It's just plain old three-card draw solitaire. That's but it? it is so beautiful, and it's got, like, little effects and it's just oh, it's so well done um i just i play it you know whenever i'm like sitting in line or you know have a, a like a you know a couple seconds of downtime it hooks up with the game center you know so that's fun but um yeah if you oh, want does it all right i'm gonna have just to a really good looking solitaire app there you go all right mine is metal detect which I didn't even realize until after the uh, the four came out that uh, you can have a metal detector in in your iPhone, and what? Yeah, it works. It actually works. Um, so, like, how? I mean, is there like it has to be within a foot or something, or yeah, like a few how inches? Far away? Well, remember, it's got the oh, compass okay. inside, and that's basically what it uses. So. The way that um, I was able to test it is um, those that have been watching my stuff over the last few years know that I've been working on this room. And I had I, I'd taken pictures, but just to test it, I put my iPhone uh, with metal detect on, obviously. I put my iPhone up to the wall, and, and I've got a gas line and a water line that go up through these walls. And sure enough, it as I slid the iPhone across the wall, it beeped when it hit the pipe. That's almost that like a stud finder. Sort of. <laughs> Yeah, um, Stud Finder. You couldn't do Stud Finder on an iPhone because no. it doesn't do any Sonic stuff. But it's yeah, it's yeah. got the, the the metal detector in it, and it's great. Um, awesome. It it doesn't really give you any directions. It just gives you um, a level. And so if you're if you're pulling your phone towards something, and let's say there's a nail, it doesn't know the difference between like a nail and a pipe. So you're gonna have uh -oh. to sort of know what's there. But I it, it works in certain situations. So. Well, that's pretty awesome. I didn't know it could even do that. Yeah. All right, we got a motor. I know that was super quick. It was super quick. Little bite-sized infinite loop show. <laughs> that's right. It's only twenty minutes. A new record. Yes, a new record. But uh, we promise that next week will be even more awesomeness. Yeah. Hopefully, there'll be more news. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to contact us, uh, I am at Starmike. Casey is K A C E Y K A S O. Casey Queso. You're looking like I said it wrong. No, I did it right. I've yeah. been practicing. Whoa, whoa that's not creepy. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I'm your favorite stalker. Uh, All right, you are Starmike. This is the Infinite Loop TV, or just Infinite Loop TV, the Infinite Loop Show on Gmail, on Google Plus, on Facebook. We're everywhere. Everywhere you want to be. All right, thanks for watching and listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye.